Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Today in this market lesson, we're going to be talking about how to scan for stocks to trade every day. The stocks that are moving, not just, you know, uh, XYZ stock. We want the stocks that are actually getting some movement and they have a catalyst, something that's happening to cause them to move because those tend to be the big ones that you hear about later in the day that you probably ended up missing if you don't know how to look for them. So the big thing that we're looking to do, firstly, is just looking to figure out what stocks are moving. And there's a lot of cool resources that do the heavy lifting for you. Now, there are different scanning utilities and things like Thinkorswim and E-Trade, and you have trade ideas. Uh, there's a lot of different applications, but you know, all of those, it seems like everybody wants to get a hand in the cookie jar. Not only do you have to pay for uh, the data coming into the markets, uh, not only do you have to pay for the charting platform, you got to pay commission to get the trade. Now you got to pay to find the stocks too. It's ridiculous. So instead of using all of these different whatever applications you have to pay for, there are some free alternatives that you can utilize instead. Now, one of the big ones that I really like a lot is StockMarketWatch.com. It's TheStockMarketWatch.com. And you can go right up to the top here to the pre-market location, right there. In the pre-market tab, that's going to give you all of the markets that are really jumping around and moving, that are gaining or losing, and it shows you the volume. Now, just because it's up 200% doesn't mean it's a good stock. It could be up 200% but only traded 10 volume. I don't care about those. The ones that I want are the ones that are up a decent amount that are also trading a decent amount of volume, right? When we're looking in the pre-market, anything over 100,000 volumes starts getting my interest, right? The more the better, of course, but over 100,000, it's something that I'll potentially take a look at. So right off the bat, we go over here to the pre-market and we look at the list. So obviously one that you're probably going to hear about today at some point, if you haven't heard about it already, I've been talking about it on Twitter and I'm sure a lot of other people have been too, is GLMD. Uh, GLMD had 2.89 million volume in the pre-market. Now that's right up to 930. At the time we started looking at it, it was about a uh, about 300,000 volume when we started taking a look at it. So, uh, you know, that's what we're looking for. It's up 257%. It's got 2.89 uh, million volume. Obviously something is going on here. So this immediately gets added to my list of interest. I want to look more into this. First of all, it's up 250% what happened, right? Why is it up that much? Is there a catalyst? Is there something causing it to be that aggressive? So we need to add this to our checklist, our watch list, if you will, to take a look and see what could be potentially driving this move. So we have that added to our list. Now let me make a, uh, a notepad list really quick here so we can make it easy on ourselves. There we go. So on our notepad list, I'll just put it off the screen so we can, uh, it's easier to add to, but GLMD is on the list. What's the next one? Well, NAKD, Naked Brand. Uh, it's a cheap one, $2.27, up 52% and has 935,000 volume. Bingo, that's another one that we want to look at, NAKD. We keep going down the list, RH, very expensive. I don't like trading expensive stocks like that. My sweet zone is usually between about three and $20. I'll go as high as about 50 to 60, but I'm generally not a big fan of the ones that cost a ton, unless there is a ludicrous amount of volatility to make it worth my time. So RH could be one that maybe fits the bill for you. I'm not gonna add it to my list because I really don't care about it when it's at 150 bucks. Uh, if we go down a little bit further, we have another one, uh, Dave & Buster's, that's up 15% and it has 155,000 volume. Okay, let's take a look at play as well. Keep going down the list and you get you kind of get the idea, right? We're looking for anything over at least 100,000 volume. If there isn't anything, then sometimes you might have to go a little bit lower, but I'm looking for something that's actually moving. So now that we have the gaining stocks that are on our list, we have all of the good movement here, all of the big gainers that also are showing volume. Now we have those on our list. Let's look at the negative side, right? The downside. First of all, uh, if you're not a fan of shorting, then you just don't look at this side, which is totally fine. Uh, but JCAP, Jernigan Capital, right? That's down 8% and it has 165,000 volume. Cool. So we'll look at that one. That will go on the list. JCAP, NNDM, uh, one from yesterday, actually, that is kind of following through with more volume. I mean, it's on the list again, we'll take a look at it, but likely this is just residual volume coming in from yesterday, uh, but we'll add it to the list just to see what's going on there. We already know what the catalyst and all that stuff is, but nothing else on the, uh, on the volume list here to really give us any clues. So we have a small list of about five stocks that we can work with right now. We can boost that a little bit more with another 
utility. And that other utility is right over here. That's marketchameleon.com reports under their pre-market trading area. It's another great free resource that you can utilize to see what's moving, what's jumping around, what the symbol is and all of that kind of stuff. So you can look through here and do the exact same process, right? What's up a lot, what's the volume on it, etc. And you can add those to your list. Now we don't want to make this video seven centuries long. So I'm just going to stick with the five that we have right now. So the next thing that we need to do now that we have our stock list is we need to look for a catalyst, right? We need to know why, why are these moving so much? Why do we have so much volume? Why are they up so much? What happened? So this is where we can go over to finviz.com and we can start looking through here first. So we need a little bit of background info on what these stocks are so we know what we're getting ourselves into. So GLMD, let's pull that up really quick. Let's look down here. And the one big thing that I like looking at, first of all, is right here, shares float and short float. That's what I really want to pay attention to because the smaller the float, the more explosive the moves can be. And depending on the direction, the short float may make an impact as well. So we look at the shares that are float, 10.69 million. Barely anything. That is awesome for a stock that can potentially run. And obviously today it did, it's up 260%. So a really tiny float on this one, that is awesome. And then if we look at the short float, there's barely anything, 0.85%. Nobody's interested in shorting this. And the only people that are probably short float right now are market makers that didn't have a choice. So we have a situation here where it's a very small short float and there are very low shares on the float as a total. That's perfect, that's what I wanna see, right? So we know that this has a great float 10.69 million float and we also have a 0.85 percent a whopping 0.85 percent short float perfect we're getting a little bit more info let's keep going through the list here nakd nakd has a float of 9.18 million another one that's really really good right 9.18 million float and the short float is 5.09 percent that's totally fine uh that's actually probably right around normal for a fairly healthy company uh, so that looks good. Let's go further. Play. That's Dave and Buster's. Let's get that one on there. This one's a little bit bigger. They have a float of 39.26 million. And we have a short float a little bit higher, 16.48%. So there might be a little bit of a bearish tone to this one because there are a lot of short participants right now in Dave and Buster's. Got to keep that in mind as well. Keep going through the list. JCAP, I say that every time. JCAP has a float of 14.21 million. And we have a short float of 6.07%. Perfect. That one is definitely of interest. And NNDM, that's the one from yesterday, uh, which is going to be of interest, obviously. But again, we know that because of yesterday's movement on NNDM, it's probably just residual volume. I'm not going to have as much emphasis on this one, but it's still one that we'll take a look at. 17.49 million float, and we have 0.14% short float. Kind of easy to figure that one out because all the shorts exited yesterday. But uh, now we have our list. Now we can start looking at what the catalyst could be. Why are these moving so, so much? So the first place that I like going is Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is an awesome resource that you can utilize to find any potential news. It's a great website, it's pretty light, it doesn't bog down the computer or anything. So it's a really nice alternative there. So GLMD, we'll do that one first. And we'll look at the list. Pre-market gainers as of 9.05, obviously that was on the list today, but I don't care about that, I wanna know the news. And we have news right there. So this came out today at 7.24 a.m. We have Galmed to release mid-stage data on Nash candidates. Uh, our Aram call <laughs> uh, this morning shares up 60% pre-market. So basically we have a, uh, a, a biomedical stock that is releasing a, uh, I believe that's a liver disease thing. Um, uh, and, and they're up a lot. Okay, well we have a catalyst. This has news, right? So we have uh, bio news. Now I'm not gonna stop there, I wanna dig a little bit further because there are a couple things in reading this that make me a little bit nervous. Galmed to release, that means that it hasn't been released yet. They are planning to release mid-stage data on Nash. Well, wait a minute, right? It hasn't been released yet and it's still up 60% pre-market at the time that they wrote this. Eh, might be a little bit of a concern. Let's go a little bit further, right? GLMD, we'll search it over here on finance.yahoo.com. And we'll look here and we can see right there uh, we got to go a little bit further down because we're recording this at 11.30. The move is already done. But if we go down a little bit further here, uh, we can see about three hours ago. Uh, and right there, 
this was, well, we've got four hours ago right there. Okay, so we've got a couple different news announcements that could potentially keep things going, right? 19 hours ago, and yeah, that doesn't really help us. The spike happened today. So four hours ago, this is the earliest news that we saw. Galmed 600 milligram Ar Aram call, whatever, achieved a regulatory approval. So it achieved a regulatory approval endpoint showing Nash resolution without worsening of fibrosis. So we're getting some better news here. Uh, and then we go a little bit further. It looks like the same thing was just reposted again. Uh, and then we go further up. Israeli company Galmed gets positive trial results for liver drug. So we can see what's happening. It's news. It, the way that the other site worded it made it seem like, well, it, it didn't come out yet. It was more of a buy the rumor, sell the news. But then we start digging a little bit deeper and we see, okay, now we have something that could potentially give us some trades to work with because there is a catalyst. It's cheap. It's only, you know, uh, at, at the time uh, at, earlier this morning, it was $16, $17. Now it's trading, it went as high as I think 27 or something like that. Uh, so we have a catalyst. The stock is reasonably priced. It's within what I like trading. It has a tiny float and there's almost nobody short on it right now. So that is good. We have built now a situation where we have a stock that we can look at that has a lot going for it to potentially trade off of. So we bring over the GLMD chart. And we look at it and we say, okay, well, you know, pre-market, this is when we're looking at it, right? So this is, the news was four hours ago, three hours ago. So uh, we're looking back at around, you know, seven, eight o'clock this morning. That's where that big spike up happens. Okay, now we have something to work with. So when it starts dipping down, we know that we have a reasonable entry location of potentially buying into the dip, assuming that there's going to be a rip at the open. It actually ended up ripping before the open and then pulling back for the rest of the day. Uh, so that's really what I'm looking to do. That's all I'm doing. It's nothing fancy. Uh, and yeah, they do have a lot of different applications out there that you can utilize and pay for and, and all of that. But you know what? There are free alternatives that do just as good. Now, that said, if all you do is stock trading, some of those other things like trade ideas and scanners it might be a little bit of a better opportunity because they are constantly running. This you have to do all manually, so there is a trade-off. But it is a nice free alternative for those of you who maybe don't want to spend the cash up front on getting some screening software that honestly isn't really that necessary in this type of situation if you don't mind doing a little bit of extra legwork. So that's how I scan for stocks. Just do a little bit of digging. Make sure that you're not just looking at the top list. Oh, this one has the most volume. I'm going to trade that one. Do a little bit of digging into it and make sure that it is sound before you go throwing some cash at it. So that's going to do it for this one. As always, if you have any questions about it, send me an email, jbrink at slingshotfutures.com, and we'll see you all next time.